So, what do you think about these bands, Kevin? Uh, I agree with the Mundo and the GP band. I think the GP band might be a targeted band. Oh, and the Jax band is a very good choice as well. Uh, the Morgue band is probably another target band, and the Soraka band I can agree with. It makes laning so difficult. It could also the Morg band could also be so the Brom first pick could come out because Morg is really um Morg is really potent against Brom because you do see that CC coming out on the fourth stack, so it's really easy to just uh, spell shield on the third stack and prevent the stun. Very true. So let's see what the uh, red team's response is. Picking quite slow. Could be a thrash. I hope um, I hope he does keep the ignite because I do love to see the aggression bot lane. Especially because for so long, you know, the double TP meta can't, can't play aggress aggressive bot lane. The second you play aggressive, everybody in the world TPs down to you. <laughs> so, you know, if, if you're going to do it, now's a good time to, you know, pack that ignite, play aggressive bot. Get Did ahead. you not enjoy doing all random, all bot? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here's the uh, the Hecarim lock. Oh, wow. The Nocturne TF. The double... Semi-globals. Uh, Semi-globals. <laughs> I love that. You know, that, that's, that's, you know, blue team's already showing a lot of pre-mediation, you know. Um, banning out the Morg to first pick the Braum, and then going for the Nocturne TF synergy. Two champions that off the bat, don't seem to have a lot of synergy, but their ultimates are just so good. Basically, it, you know, it could turn out to be all random, all bot, just like you said. I really am intrigued by that double pick, revealing exactly what they're planning on doing with the vision denial and also gaining vision on anyone on the enemy team. Mm -hmm. uh, I would not like to be the enemy jungler right now, which would at any moment after level 6 could get ganked in his own jungle. Exactly. And this also opens up the blue team to go for a defensive hyperscaling AD carry, maybe even the Vayne pickup, because if you do pick up Vayne, you're going to be shoved in quite a bit, especially against the Tristana that's being hovered, which sets up a lot of TF plays. Mm -hmm. So there's a Tristana and the Fizz lock-in. You know, Fizz, if this is a Fizz mid, could be a Fizz jungle. Very good against the uh, TF. And um, Yes, there, there are... A few ways to, to counter TF, you can either continuously shove the, the wave in and force him to have to wave clear under tower so he can't really roam as much, but that opens you up to, to ganks. Or you can play an assassin such as Zed or Fizz and just try to uh, nullify anything he can do by killing him over and over again. Definitely. And it, this looks like it could be a Hecarim jungle. And, um, you know, I think that would be... Uh, the Hecarim pick here is going to pay dividends. And I'll tell you why. Because it's up to Braum to stop him, but if he can't, you, there's like three squishies that you can just flat up clothesline, you know? So mm -hmm. it, it, the Hecarim pick could swing the game, but looks like this could be an Irelia top. Um, what do you think about the Riven-Irelia matchup, Kevin? Uh, I think... It's a very skill-based matchup. Uh, it'll depend on a few things. It'll depend on what Aurelia decides to max first. Mm -hmm. And same with Riven. They're, they're two champs that have multiple options in what they can decide to uh, max first. Uh, it can snowball very heavily in either, either uh, anyway. side. Yeah. Also, also uh, two things to consider. One... I'm not too sure if I agree with the Riven going TP, because she has the team to actually just flat up go the Ignite. Uh, maybe they're afraid of a late game split pushing Irelia, and maybe the TF can't, you know, stand up against it without getting dove. But definitely, if Riven wanted to take Ignite and Snowball her, her early game presence, she could have. And another thing that I want to focus on is, uh, look at Blue Team's bot lane. They got the Lucian Braum lane, you know, one of the scariest lanes to go into. And... Uh, red team, they actually end up picking up the Tristana Thresh, which, you know, takes some time to scale up. So, could be three, like, two very strong lanes coming out for the blue team. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of this game depends on 
one, the top lane matchup, because like you said, it's going to snowball in either way. Mm -hmm. Two, how well this Fizz can contain the TF. Is Fizz going to just wreck this um, TF and just become so strong that he's up against, like, you know, basically three squishies and, like, a, a non, a tank, a non hyper tank jungle, right? So if yes. he gets ahead, that's going to be a problem. And three, how well can the the Lucian Braum just abuse this Tristana because that's one of the strongest lanes, one of the scariest lanes to go into, but Tristana scales really, really well. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of what you're saying has to do with this Thresh and this Hecarim because Nocturne really isn't that great at ganking lanes pre-6. So Hecarim and Thresh can possibly abuse that and take Rome's mid and gank mid on this TF who besides Flash does not have any escapes. Uh, but in terms of taking Ignite versus TP on Riven, okay. I can sort of understand, especially because uh, Aurelia will probably answer TF's uh, ultimate with her TP to maybe mm -hmm. even up a fight maybe in bot lane, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, in which case Riven can also TP as well. So they will pretty much never be down a man in a team fight uh, that they initiate. Definitely. And, you know, I have seen quite a few Hacker and Jungles, you know, taking another summoner other than Flash, you know, going either Smite Ignite or Smite TP. So, you know, that could have been another option as well. But mm -hmm. definitely goes the Flash, maybe just to get a better initiate or, you know, just to get that ulti off and just flash out. We'll see. And, you know, another thing is, like, blue team, in terms of Siege, they don't have too strong of a Siege. Um, so it could end up being a problem. And, you know, TF takes quite a, I think, quite a while to get to that, you know, wave clear level when you have, like, a 500 range AD carry to clear yeah. for. Yeah. So it could be a problem. And um, even red team, they have a lack of wave clear. They have the trust, but... That's about it, you know. Uh, Fizz, very low wave clear, melee champion, you know. It could be hard. It, it, this game could snowball very heavily, Kevin, in one favor, depending on who gets ahead, just from the fact that both teams have a lack of wave clear. Yes, I, I would definitely say that the at level 6, the advantage, in my opinion, is with the blue side, with the Nocturne, the TF, um, being able to maybe not win their lanes uh, or uh, destroy like the enemy jungler but with the roaming and team play they can definitely make plays and snowball the game from there definitely agreed but that does require a lot of setup so let's see if they can execute you know this sort of high execution comp properly because it's not just like like we've seen before like a dumb point and click like everybody go kind of comp so yeah uh, also just a fun fact Everyone on uh, this red side has taken the Thunderlords. <laughs> <laughs> League of it Thunderlords. Is, it really is. And on the blue side, everyone except for Nocturne and... Uh, well, actually, it's Nocturne, Braum, and Lucian do not have Thunderlords. Okay, I'm pretty Lucian sure... actually going with this Warlord's Bloodlust, which I don't know if I actually agree with. It could make sense if he goes into the Essence Reaver heavy crit build just so he can lower his CDs quite a bit and just put that kind of like a spell weaver. But, you know... I just find that Warlords, uh, it, it's it's going to hurt his early game just so heavily. He will not... That That is pretty much a uh, useless keystone until uh, he gets some crit. And even then, it, it will only proc so often until he gets more and more crit. While Thunderlord's Tristana will be doing massive amounts of damage in lane. Definitely. So it just comes down to, uh, you know, who can win um, those skirmishes. Whereas, because it just comes down to, like, blue team, they have to, in my opinion, get some setup force that unfavorable fight where it's like the, it looks like a 3v3 and all of a sudden you have a Nocturne ulting in or a TF ulting in and uh, that's where blue team really shines in my opinion. So. Yeah. Or or a Riven TPing in. <laughs> <laughs> Out of nowhere. It could work, you know, if she gets like a right TP and um, 
So yeah. seems like uh, the pause going out because blue team's mid laner's mom ganked him. So gank <laughs> uh, once again being prevalent. Uh, I feel you're, since you are the AD carry of Team Psy, I mm -hmm. find it that you'd probably find it uh, awful to be this Tristana right now. I feel like out of anyone in this game, I would not want to be this Tristana. Definitely. Uh, realizing that anyone at any moment after level 6 could just come up to your lane and just bop you on the head. <laughs> A lot of pressure on this Tristana. And you know what's really unfortunate, Kevin? As soon as... I always tell my mid laner, tell me when that goddamn TF is 6. But... And then I just don't shove, but... You know, if if the if the Lucian Braum play this lane correctly, Tristana can't freeze. You know, yes, that's very because true. Because of her E passive, it's always going to end up pushing, and that just put, makes you a sitting duck against a random Nocturne ulti, a random TF just coming down and just spoiling your day. You know, you you can just be like, oh yeah, I'm down five CS to this Lucian Braum lane. You know, I'm going to outscale. You know, everybody's happy, and then all of a sudden these people come down, and then all. So you're down 0-2, you're down your bot tower, and then you're down a dragon. So, it just... Yeah, and I know we were kind of harping, at least I was harping on that Morgana not taking Exhaust, but I think this is a scenario where Exhaust is going to be the savior of all uh, those skirmishes. Because you have so many targets. You can nullify a lot of Riven's damage, you can nullify a lot of Nocturne's damage, and, uh, as well as TF's damage. Um, and obviously Lucian's, uh, if he's that close, but most likely it's going to be those other three champs. And we have an invade coming from the red side right now, but it's seen coming by this Braum. Very Sun good ward. Good ward, Sun's out of Q. Oh, but the he's hook. hooked. Gets the hook down, but this could be pretty bad because it is level one Braum. He gets chunked quite down. TF comes down with the red card, gets an AoE slow. Raven with a flank. Fails her jump, gets oh, no. and the pause comes out. Wow. This, this could be this really good. This could be really bad for the ribbon. You set it snowballs in either direction, and it is about to snowball in the horribly wrong direction for this ribbon. Especially if I really can pick up the kill or even just the assist. So I'm very curious about what this Riven was doing alone, just behind the enemy team. It was looking so uh, safe for them. Mm -hmm. Braum got out, he didn't need to burn Flash. TF got a great red card that hit multiple people. And now this Riven's exhausted, and it looks like she's about to fail her third, third Q. But she does have flash, so it could be just enough. But with the exhaust slow and the upcoming thresh hook, this could be very poor. And she flashes, gets all the stick. yellow card from TF. But, and he's hooked. And yet another hook, trick guy going two for two. Great job. Yellow card pull, pulled out from TF. Doesn't seem like there's going to be any more fighting. And everybody just recalls at 1 minute 15 to get back to their respective lanes. So we have no Flash Ribbon and no Exhaust Thresh. I would definitely say that's a win for the red team. Agreed. Uh, and this Aurelia will definitely have a much easier time. Riven definitely needs her Flash to make plays, and without it, life becomes very difficult. You know, you were talking about the importance of um, Exhaust on this Thresh, right? But mm -hmm. also the importance of exhaust on this Braum, you know, it is a Lucian Braum lane, yeah, sure, you could just take the Ignite and try to stomp even harder, but they do have an Irelia, they do have a Fizz, and even a, a Laking... A Hecarim. And a Hecarim, definitely, so a lot of pressure coming in on this Braum, exhaust definitely the right choice in my opinion, and it's up to this Braum to see if he can peel for his immobile carries. Mm-hmm. While their team comps are definitely uh, very different, they have a lot of similarities where their uh, top lane, mid lane, and jungle all want to dive in on this back, uh, this back line. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Tristana, sure, she has a lot of self-peel, she has a W to jump out, she has the ulti, but... And, and a very good trade there for Lucian and Braum. 
it's already going to be hard. You know, Lucian's already at 10 CS to 4 creeps. Definitely just shoving that lane in. It's mm -hmm. going to be really tricky to be this Tristana. But, you know, hopefully Trist can just stay back and farm up and scale into the late game monster that we all know she is. Yeah. And they're coming out with a level 3 gank. This could be very bad for the immobile mid laner. Yes! Oh, man. TF and like I said, it's it's up to this Hecarim or this Dresh to make plays in, in, in the mid side because Nocturne just cannot do much in the early game. Yep. And, you know, he, he ganked just the right lane. You know, he ganked the Fizz lane. And, uh, that's oh, but Nocturne in the enemy jungle, he shows a little too early, I think. Nocturne has the double buffs, though, gets the fear off. Oh, but he's taking harass from red buff. Could it? Oh, very smart play by Hecarim, mm -hmm. who smites oh, first the flashes player. the E, forces the flash, double flash. Oh, wow, just... well played. The invade from the blue team going horribly wrong. T uh, TF coming, coming up, trying to see what he can salvage. Oh, but he misses the auto. But Fizz is out of mana. Could be. He has the auto up, and there it is. Yeah, no, I'm out of Raptors. <laughs> Fizz. There's so much to live for. So ignited there. Could and the Aurelia with the flash dash. You know wow. what's, what's an interesting mechanic, especially because ignite, uh, because experience is so um, useful right now in this meta. Whereas you know how Fizz died, he actually doesn't get the experience for the kill on TF. So, wow, I did not know that. In, in terms of a 1v1 laning perspective, this could put TF slightly ahead, even though Fizz ended up with 3 assists. It just mm -hmm. ends up if the EXP is, you know, enough. I don't think it will be, but just slightly interesting. We are not even 5 minutes into this game, and it has already been action-packed. So much happening in the jungle. I mean, I love uh, it. Both teams have, like, heavy dive comps. And look, look at the Hecarim, he's 2-0, look at the Aureli, he has one kill, and the Fizz has three assists, 100% kill participation, like, this, this Lucian should be terrified. This, this TF is going to have a hard time just even surviving in laning phase, as opposed to, um... Oh, and the dive by Fizz, but Nocturne is there to secure the kill. Like, forget about team fights. this TF has to survive in lane, and... You know, when he calls for help, who's he gonna call to help him, you know? TP Riven or like the the Nocturne who's not even level six yet, so this Yeah, I think this is what we were talking about where it, it's just so difficult for TF to do anything right now. And this Thunderlord's Aurelia doing work. Yep, this th Oh wow, and this Riven still does not have flash. But she makes it out. Nice Lucian, however. Trick guy, three for three in hooks. And he's going to go down. And oh no. Red buff that secured it for Hecarim. Thresh taking a lot of damage, but he will survive. This Hecarim is definitely doing work. Kudos to him. Uh, Royal Baron going in for some harass. Cute taking a tower hit and a yellow card. It's a certain dominance, dude. I think this top lane, however, is getting out of control, even though Aurelia roamed, and you'd think that Riven would be able to reset the waves and gain some farm off that, and as I'm talking, TF is slowly getting killed in the mid lane. I don't know if it's safe for him to stay in this lane right now with no summoners. Definitely isn't, and... Nocturne is hovering around, but he's not level 6 yet, so there's not much he can do. Riven picking up the serrated Dirk, and you know... This has ulti, and he will use it, but he misses oh, and hits the Nocturne. <laughs> Good yes. guy Nocturne, am I right? <laughs> but, like I was saying, the Riven does have the serrated Dirk, and I know she's down 24 to 52, but... You know, maybe it'll be enough? I really doubt it, just because the Sheen pro proc from... I realize is too good in burst trades, but we'll see. Yeah. And this Nocturne keeps hovering around, but I, I just don't see what he can do against the Fizz right now, who has Playful Trickster. At this point, I think he's just trying to prevent the dive. I think he's trying to prevent the dive, and I think TF wanted 6, so that he could either maybe ult back in lane, which would relieve a lot of pressure off the map, meaning Fizz is doing his job really well. Uh, Nocturne just holding this lane, but he's losing so much experience right now. Definitely. This Fizz pick is paying dividends and like Hecarim just putting out so much early pressure, snowballing two lanes at once. 
Ooh, the Irelli ult oh. helps out, but good flash from Raven stays alive. A very good shield, too, that will save her. You but know, uh, another interesting piece of League trivia is that, aside from standing in the center of Pantheon ult, with no scalings, if you get hit by four Riven, uh, Irelli ults, it does the most damage to the game, in terms of ultimates. Wow. I know that, and Hecarim with a great ulti. Down. Braum surely going down, Lucian will too, and oh, the last auto flying across. Tristana buffers the auto well, and you know, we did say if I was this Tristana, you know, she's probably has it the worst in the game, but she's all of a sudden, she's 2-0-1, up 11 or 12 CS in a bully lane, you know? Like, look at, look at this Lucian's back, he had to buy a pickaxe, which doesn't even build into the Essence Reaver, which is why Lucian's strong right now. This Fizz is doing so much work, he just playful tricks her the yellow card, very standard play, but... There's just not much that this TF can do right now. It, it appears that Red Team is just slowly dismantling this blue team. You have all three lanes. This may be... No, and she will make it out alive. I mean, if you look at the CS differential in this top side, I'm actually quite shocked after seeing that roam from Aurelia. You would think that Ribbon may have been able to do something with that, but down by half her CS, mm -hmm. and that gap is increasing. Hecarim now hovering in the topside jungle, wants to maybe stop this blue buff. Nope, looks like he's just going for the scuttle. <laughs> Good enough, consolation cries. It was a little risky because I really had that, even though she does have the TP, but no need That's to take that true. risk. But, you know, it's just not looking good for the blue team. They picked a high execution comp and they fell apart early. But, you know, let's just see. Maybe their superior map pressure can turn it around. But right now it's not looking good. The Hecarim is 3-0-3. He's been part of 6 out of 8 kills. So he's definitely doing his job out-pressuring the Nocturne, who's just probably just trying to farm till 6. And Nocturne, you know, he wants to farm till 6, but he can't because... Oh. His TF is just getting good. Move. 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 A good flash. The fear could come out. The ignite goes down. Hecarim comes up. Is going to get the kill. Surely, oh, no. double kill for Fizz. It's getting the gap. The gold gap is getting wider and wider. Not looking good for this TF. That blue card from TF. Mm -hmm. He was most likely dead from the ignite anyway, but that might have been the nail the coffin for. Nocturne. Yep. And like just looking at individual champion gold, you know, it's no it's no secret that red team's up almost six seven K gold, but Irelia is up one point four K gold just by herself. Uh Hecarim's up one point four K. uh Fizz is up one point two K, one thousand one hundred gold in the bot lane, just not looking good. I really oh, the turnaround from Aurelia. So much burst damage with the Sheen as well, you know? That's the, the damage from the Sheen. I'm not even sure if she used her Corrupting Potion for the increased damage, mm -hmm. but that true damage is just so much. And she also has an entire two levels over this. Great hook coming out from uh, Trick Eye, too. And I have to say, this guy, you know, they target ban the Morgue, but if this is his secondary pick after Morg, I want to see his Morg. Because every time I've seen this, this Thresh, he's landed a clutch hook. Yes, and even in the first minute of the game, he landed too. Yep. Uh, I think this is a weakness of showing Nocturne TF so early on. Yep. I think they maybe could have shown uh, the Lucian or anything like that. But they have such a risky team comp right now. And Fizz, looking for blood... Oh my goodness. Just three Goodbye, shots. Lucian. Doesn't even really have to wait for the ulti to go down. Scott, uh, Rift Herald being secured. Probably going to be given to this Irelia. I love the change, though, that it drops the buff. So it's not like whoever gets the last hit. Yeah. Because back before that, you know, jungles might have had to secure it with their smite. It would just go over to them. And it is something to help you push lane. So it's kind of useless to have it on your jungler, but... I like the new change. I really get yeah, it. I mean, we're Dota now. Just gotta pick <laughs> up. <laughs> Buffs. <laughs> exactly.
Um, surprisingly enough, nobody has made a play for Dragon, even though, in my opinion, the prevalence of Dragon has decreased dramatically because the meta is so much more snowball-y. But yeah. just the 2-13 to 13 score and the Fizz is two-shotting everyone, I would just pick it up for free. Oh, this ribbon is very dead. Right now, what? we have two of this team do to come back, though. I don't know. You have to just deny. I I don't know because there's two laners who who are getting dove. Like I have yet to see this Nocturne and this TF make plays anywhere on the map, and I understand it's hard. I think what sh it's a weakness of of how they were playing even earlier. You saw that TF didn't want to leave his lane even though he had no HP. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think what he needs to do is he needs to sacrifice some of the towers right now to get some kills. He needs to make plays with this Nocturne. Who's ulting in and just ulting in. out. Tristan. This is poor communication. TF has no mana. And the flank from Hecarim just seemingly out of nowhere comes out and picks up the free kill onto the Nocturne. Oh, and Fizz going for the tower dive. Oh, flashes out. TF gets hit by the ulti. Maybe they can turn around with the Lucian Bromley, but no. It looks oh, oh it picks up the kill on Fizz, Fizz. shut down. Great job from this ribbon, good rotation. Really great lantern from this fresh to be able to see that this fight they had gotten enough and that they needed to get out of there. Thresh is playing really well. He's setting up yes. so many plays, not just hooks, but using all of his abilities well. Tristana, however, remember she does not flash, but the Aurelia coming in mid, almost four shots, still has more to offer. Pokes on the Braum a little bit. Now look, Thunderlord procs are just doing an immense amount of work. I think that Nocturne and TF need to not be... They're focusing too much on their own lanes, and I think if they're doing that, they need to play something that has a much more potent combo instead of Nocturne. They need to play something like Elise, uh, Lee Sin Gregs, anything that in the early game you can just gank the mid lane. Right now, if he wants to gank mid lane, Nocturne is probably not the best choice. Nocturne and TF together need to go into the jungle uh, with Lucian or someone and make a play. Definitely. And they're, they're still playing standard lanes, and I think that's a major issue. The problem with this is that red team is so ahead that yes. Fizz can just roam into every lane and pick up free kills. It is honestly a buffet for him. Same thing with the Irelia. Look how deep they are. No, does not even care. Goes into three people. Of course, is going to die for it, but forces the TP as well. That's how far behind uh, blue team is. But, you know, a couple of more of these plays, and it could bide, you know, bode well for, for blue team, but we'll, we'll have to see. And Fizz... Just hiding in between these two towers, waiting for some poor soul to walk into that bush. Oh, he sees his target, and it is this Lucian. Lucian. Let's see if Lucian can die. This is the third nope. time. Oh, Lucian not having a good time. Nothing <laughs> playful about that playful trickster. <laughs> Goes for the bully lane, does not end up well. <laughs> that was so cheeky. <laughs> Tristana just in front of three people, autoing, not even orb walking, and then takes the lantern out. <laughs> Good guy, Thresh, there to save his AD carry. But, you know, just. Just. There's no. Like I mentioned before, there's no wave clear in both teams. And, uh,. The difference, however, is that Trist is a really good demo demolitionist, so if they do choose to siege, it could be really bad. Oh man, this Nocturne thinking he had his teammates near him and that he could take this fight was gravely mistaken. The Cole comes out, Cole does not too much. If he is somehow still alive, oh, but the, the cards miss and Tristana just barely makes it out. Really good play from the Trist and the uh, Fizz because the Fizz playful tricks are just at the right time, buying enough time to kind of bait in the Nocturne while while buying enough time for her team for Fizz's team to get there. So good job overall. And of course, at 17 minutes, we have Nyrelia pushing down your top lane inhibitor turret. Not looking good.
You have three people trying to answer this one, or four people trying to answer this one Aurelia, but they've decided against it for good reason. Because as they go to the top lane, Hecarim just decides, I will push mid lane. You know, the the funny or also unfortunate, depending on your perspective, thing is that you know, blue team had all the keys to set up a split push if they're even ahead with so much global pressure, you know? If mm -hmm. you send somebody to 1v1 the, the TF, then all of a sudden the Nocturne ultis in and turns into 2v1, picks up a free kill, but because they're so far behind, it's like the Irelia and the Fizz that are requiring two people to stop them. So, just not going the way they wanted. And I agree with you, Kevin. It, I, I honestly think... It's it's a problem in the way that they drafted, you know. The early, yeah, pick, you know, picking up TF and Nocturne just just completely shows your hand in the first three picks, and it's not what you want to do. And it also set up for a counter pick. And TF going gold, but doesn't last for very long. And Lucian as well. It is a massacre in this blue side jungle or red side jungle rather. Not looking good. Just picking up kills wherever. Red side can, and now it looks like their their attention is on the bot lane. Tower goes down. Sustana is pushing the mid tower. There are no tier two towers left after this mid tower goes down. And with Sustana, it is definitely not standing for long. This is a T. This is a solo pushing AD carry against a TF. That is how far ahead, and that is how far how comfortable red team feels. So so let's let's kind of think about this. Uh, is this a best of three, correct? Yeah, it is a best of three. Okay, so I think... I don't hate the the TF pick, um, although it does seem that it is being outclassed by this, this Fizz. If they do go with this TF pick again, uh, I think they need a much uh, stronger early game presence from the, the jungler, and they need uh, someone who can make plays earlier. Yeah, and not just that, somebody who can 2v2 well. Pick up the, the Lee Sin, pick up the Elise, you know, because I'm pretty sure that if you're picking up an early game jungle with a TF, it's pretty obvious where a lot of your attention is going to be, you know? So in, in the case of a counter gank, make it so that you can't get counter gank. And as we were talking, Fizz just picks up another two kills, just just basically choking them out. It mm -hmm. might They might be setting up for Baron as they are getting scuttle control. Uh, only defensive wards out for the blue team, and yes, Baron is started. This is a Triforce Rage Blade Irelia. A and there comes the Surrender. Surrender vote comes out. GG's all around. GG comes out, and red team picks up the victory in game one. So, you know, Kevin, what would you do differently if you were a blue team? Uh, with this team comp, or... Do you mean it for the next game? For the next game. For the next game. Uh, well, this Fizz was a monster on this uh, uh, on an assassin, clearly. And this Aurelia, after she picked up a kill, was also a beast. Honestly, their bot lane was doing okay until Fizz started just picking on this Lucian and Hecarim came bot after getting a bunch of kills. I think this will actually be a neat need to be a change in the top, mid, and jungle. I think top will have to play something much safer uh, to be able to hold the lane. And I think not, they need to choose a jungler just with a better early game presence. Mm -hmm. um, the TF pick isn't awful, but...